Last week I stumbled on this documentary about 5G that was predicting some kind of apocalyptic end. So I thought, you know what, let's watch it. So I forced myself to watch it. It wasn't actually hard because it was quite well edited. And some of it was quite interesting because I, I had heard that um, health issues have been found with uh, existing mobile technology. Like, for example, France has decided to ban Wi-Fi from nurseries, uh, nursery schools, and also severely restricted in elementary schools. So I know there are uh, issues around health and, and all this Wi-Fi technology around us, all, all the radio waves being, we're being uh, bombarded with all the time. So that was interesting. Um, but then, you know, they start talking about it's using military technology. Well, when I was doing my PhD, one of my lab colleagues was working on adapting missile guidance systems for robotics. So that's using military weapons technology for civilian purposes. So, you know, that, that doesn't bother me. And then they started talking about chemtrails. Um, chem, what chemtrails actually are, are contrails. So what happens is vortices from the, the wings and from the engine and things like that cause cloud formation up there. Uh, so it's a naturally occurring phenomenon. They say that, you know, we're being sprinkled with chemicals. Actually, they, they were talking about nanoparticles in these chemtrails. Now, I'm sure that jet engines are emitting nanoparticles, also known as burnt kerosene residue or soot. Um, and it kept on going like that. I think the, the, the overarching point was that no safety testing is being done on 5G, so we're effectively guinea pigs. Uh, anyway, let's put that aside. I can't, I can't comment on whether it's safe or not because I don't have the data. I think nobody does. So let's, let's move on. Let's have a look at 5G itself. As an engineer, I have to say it's pretty impressive what they've done. The uh, frequencies they're working at, the bandwidths they're talking about, using multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO, to direct the beam to individual users. It's all very impressive. Um, and the sheer number of devices that they expect they'll be able to connect to it. But you know what? The, the reason for technology is to improve people's quality of life. At least that's, that was the thing that interested me, why I became an engineer, was the idea that we could take what we've learned with science about the world and design these machines, these devices that can make our quality of life better. So let's have a look. Um, first one, oh, well, actually first two, let's have the first, the top two items are way higher speed and lower latency. So late, the speed is how fast things download. Latency is basically how long you have to wait before it starts downloading or uploading um, in either direction. Now, with 4G LTE, I can already stream videos. Um, browsing, I'm the casual browsing I do on a phone, I find comfortable too. Mind you, for serious browsing, I still prefer using a laptop or a desktop computer. It's, it's just, it's the size of the screen. You're doing everything with fat fingers on a tiny screen doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work, right? So the existing speeds are more than good enough for me. I mean, what am I going to do with all that extra bandwidth? Watch a, an, a 4K ultra high definition video on a phone this small. Maybe if I get a big you know, magnifying glass or something. It just yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't appeal. Um, the other big... The other big uh, advantage they're talking about is the number of devices that can be connected per square mile or per square kilometer. And it's, again, technically very impressive. They're talking about this for the Internet of Things, where everything gets connected. So you have sensors and, and devices connected all over the year. Everything from your, your flower pot to your fridge and, and, and whatever. I suppose you could also stick a sensor up your nose. Uh, and every time you sneeze, they get sent to a cloud server somewhere, uh, if, if you want to, whatever. Uh, so, how does that actually improve my, my life? Uh, don't, don't get me wrong, Internet of Things has its place, it has its uses, it's particularly useful if, if you are, if you do want to have sensors here and there. But uh, 
you know, that, is that goal? For example, we have a, an air purifier that has Wi-Fi in it and it's designed to be, again, it's one of those Internet of Things devices. It's a, not a computer, it's an air purifier that's connected to the Internet and you can control it over your phone. Except I don't use it for that because um, to do that, I have to create an account on the menu. I won't tell you who the manufacturer is. Let's just keep it anonymous. I have to create an account on the manufacturer's system and all data transfer goes through their centralized server. So, but I just want to control the device right there. Why do I need to, you know, and, and a, why does my data need to be uploaded to your, your servers? And, and this is one of my, I guess, annoyances of the way things are heading, like everything being uploaded into the cloud. Why? Um, I know some people will say, yeah, but Hans, you, your emails are stored on a server you know, out on the internet somewhere, which is, which is true. But I get to choose which email server I want to use. Whereas with this one, it has to be that the manufacturer of that device, it has to be their servers or whoever they, you know, like for example, they could use Amazon or Microsoft servers or one of the other um, ser cloud service providers. Either way, it's like I don't want every time I burp or fart to be uploaded to the internet along with the, you know, the, the temperature in my house and everything else. How does it actually improve my quality of life? And it's like, you know, upload it all there for, for what purpose? So that AI can sort of read it and somehow figure out how to sell me more Internet of Things devices. I mean, I'm joking there, but the point is, it's impressive technologically, but in the end, I'm not really interested. It doesn't, doesn't really add anything to my life. And I think when it comes to, when it comes to what you're designing and what you're doing as an engineer, I think it, it's worth stepping back every now and then and think, why am I actually doing this? What's the, what's the benefit? Um, I know on the, on the counter side, sometimes you, you, well, this is more science than engineering with science. You just investigate things to learn more, not knowing what future applications might come out of it. But otherwise it's like, you know, 5g, this, they're talking about an insane number of new cell sites because it's high frequencies. It doesn't travel as far. That means that the cell towers need to be ever closer to where everybody lives and, and works. So like even in just the United States, I think I saw 800,000 ish base stations. It, it's, it's an insane amount of money being spent on this. And I just think the, the benefits, Kind of looked it. So yeah, I I won't be rushing out to buy any 5G devices. I'm hoping that my phone will will last me a good number of years before I have to buy, get a new one. Um, I suppose may, maybe maybe um, might be different for people in very densely populated cities. If if you can think of something, some reason why you kind of need or, or really want 5G, why don't you just leave a comment? That other people know, but but from my perspective, it's like, eh, eh. I'll pass on this one. Anyway, that's it for this week. Um, next week, I should be back to more normal engineering stuff. I just thought this was interesting because 5G is being rolled out, and uh, yeah, interesting documentary. Don't agree with a lot of it. Anyway, see ya. See you later.